morning. I thought Joe would never stop talking. <laughs> but you guys obviously know how to have fun. I mean, I've never been to a medical group meeting where you threw rubber balls at the CEO, so that's great. And he had a weapon to fire back. I hope you have that on the video, and it's a recruiting tool. So if you're crazy enough, this is what we do. So really wonderful to be here. So really, how about a round of applause for Joe? I mean it, OK? <laughs> you could read along with me all clinically integrated networks like Jefferson and FMC are accountable to the public for their degree of success. And if this initiative, what we're doing here today, is not taken by us, then it will be taken by the lay public. Now, I love this. And I could have written here August 22, 2015, but this is an exact citation from the inaugural meeting of the American College of Surgeons, no less, at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel on Park Avenue in New York City a century ago, during the First World War. So all guys, no girls at this meeting, clearly in 1918. So they were pretty prescient. And what I would argue is what they're talking about here is accountability for what we do every day, where you are headed, and not only being accountable, but being transparent about it. And so the themes for the rest of the day today and even part of tomorrow are all about really what these guys, pretty incredible, incredible that it's a bunch of surgeons doing this 100 years ago, doubly incredible, they were thinking about these issues of transparency and accountability. So healthcare was about 1 or 2% of the GDP in 1918, now 19%. Our, our total spending on national defense, the military industrial complex, that's 5% that's of the GDP. So our industry, we're four times the size of the medical industrial complex at this moment. Probably not sustainable for all kinds of important reasons. More on that in a little bit, too. Main message. We've been at this for a century. But today, because it's 19% of the GDP, well, now this is getting everybody's attention. Another part of population health says, well, we're going to have to come to grips with this individual behavior. I showed you that's 50% of the story. So if we made rounds this afternoon with your hospitalists who are in the hospital taking care of your patients right now, you and I know that 40% of all the deaths from FMC patients are attributable to smoking, unhealthy diet, the connection to physical inactivity, and of course, alcohol, 40%. All potentially reversible, potentially. So population health says, well, OK, we got to engage in the hard work of tackling these issues. And we'll come back to that theme. From a policy perspective, the nation really, at the moment, is not fixated on this issue. From a research perspective, it's about 2% of all research dollars going to population health. I want to come in on Monday morning, my clinical day, and ask the question, how am I doing today, and what can I do to do a better job? When I'm able to ask and answer that question, we will have arrived at delivering population health.